Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're finding me and Larry for the first time, please subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Larry's channel. Both links are in the video description. It's P Valley time, Larry. You said you was gonna <laughs> give it, you said you was gonna give it two episodes and we're gonna get the verdict. And I've got this review for us to do P Valley. I've got my top five WTF moments. And all I'm gonna say is this before we get into moment number five. You know, last week I was caking up for autumn night. <laughs> right? You remember that, right? I hear you. So, so what, what, what's your name calling this episode? Uh, Summer's Rain? Yeah, yeah. Well, I am <laughs> done with Autumn Knight's crazy ass. She's too crazy for me. I don't do crazy. And guess who? I'm riding <laughs> in the Mercedes. I'm in the Mercedes. Shouts <laughs> out to all the ladies that go jogging with what she had on with your pit bull. Shouts out to ladies that do that. I ain't never seen it in my hood. But shouts out if you got a pit bull and you go jogging around the streets like that. Larry, I'll tell you the one who I like in this show. Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi, boy. I love me some Mississippi. So if I, what did she say? If I, as, as crooked eye, crooked, crooked eye, whatever yeah. she was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I, and I'm sure you was very happy because they got into the filthy McNasty real early in the show yesterday. But, yeah, this, this, see, the way they did this episode is how episode one should have been. I feel like this should have been like that. All that should have been in episode one. They would have had people talking about this show like this show was lit up and ready to go. Instead, I think it, the first episode fell flat. So, well, I, I like the first episode as a setup episode. It went the way that I said last week. Let's set up the story and then dive in, which is what they did this week. So... We're, I like when they hit you with the action right up yeah, front, and yeah, they get yeah. you all ready to go. You're invested, and then they go in and lo bring you down a little bit, get the story mm -hmm. in there, and then pump that back up again. So that's the way I like it. Otherwise, I feel like if you if you start down here, if you start bringing story in at first, I feel like you lose people because some people are like, yeah, it's all right. They never get to the good stuff. So mm -hmm. if you hit them with the good stuff right up front, you know, then you take a little lull, and then you bring it back up. Oh, yeah. So, so you missed the Duda on the movies and TV shows, huh? It ain't no build up, no set it up. It's just bam, 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 I'm in, I'm out. That's you. Then, yeah. First first episode. Then, well, yeah. I'm, gl I'm glad they was able to satisfy <laughs> you this time. Let's go to the, the number five WTF moment. Very telling moment. Always a pleasure, Uncle Clifford. Oh, pleasure's all mine, Corbin. <laughs> Tell me. Back on Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big reveal, ladies and gentlemen. This brother Corbin is in a family of people that descended from slave owners of cotton fields. And the daddy of Corbin went in there and was having sex with, uh, I think he said, the, 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 maid. The, the maid. And he just happens to be the brother of these two douchebags who is with the, the daddy's um, wife. His or whatever. brother. His brother. Yeah, his brother. Yeah, 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 whatever. And he, they've got this trust, and they are trying to bring a casino to the land. And in order right. to facilitate that, they've got to get Corbin to sign off on the agreement that they all three have to sign on. And Corbin, rightly so, is saying, hell no, I don't want the upfront money. I want that lifelong money, and I want that casino to lease. I totally agree with him. But Larry, did you catch did you catch that Easter egg that happened in that scene? Tell me you caught the Easter egg because if you didn't, you know I slowed it down and I got it for you. Show it to me. After Uncle Clifford dapped him up, take a look at the back of his shirt. Oh, I did see that where he had the where he had the blood on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think because they because they had he brought that whip. I guess they when they asked him when they were in the room. And she said, where do you want it? And he said, someplace where it won't show. So I figured that must have been what it was. I don't know, but I think that was blood on Clifford's hands somehow, oh, some way. Hands? Yeah. I no, think, I think I that think... was blood on what's-his-name's hand because I, I think they hit him. And, and, and Because remember when they were in the champagne room? No, I and, agree with you on that. I totally yeah. agree with you on that. And but, they were asking, where do you want it? And she was saying, I'm about to pick. And he was saying, I get, he was saying he wanted it someplace it wouldn't show. Mm -hmm. So, But Clifford dapped him up with the right hand and put his left hand on his back. 
So the left hand never touched Corbin. Just well, a little Easter egg. Keep in mind with that. Now, give me your thoughts. Well, where it came from? I hey man, that's that's why it's called an Easter egg. You only get a couple of colors. You don't get all of them. Now, <laughs> tell me your thoughts on them introducing Corbin into the storyline. I mean, it's interesting. You know, I mean, I agree with the dude business wise that mm -hmm. you know that I would rather go for the lease than go for just selling the property outright. If you have a place like that, that's just worth way too much money. Yep. You know, I mean, I don't know what the brothers are into. The other brothers, where they may want, you know, they may want that property. Um, you know, they may want that property. You know, maybe, excuse me, they maybe they have something else going on, and they want just want to get rid of it. Oh, I don't know what they have going that Corbin doesn't, but I feel them. I, I would, I would, I would do the same thing. I mean, maybe if I was, if I was Corbin, maybe I would try and find a way to buy him out or something. And just mm -hmm. say, hey, if you guys don't want to, if you don't want the property, let's do a lease. You know, I'll pay you guys, I'll pay you guys, you know, over the course of how many every years to get your to get you up to the point where you know you were gonna get your sale amount or something if they want to do that. But if they just want to be uh, you know, out from under the property, but it doesn't seem like it makes any sense to actually sell it. It just doesn't seem like that makes any sense. I, I mean, mean that that place these, is going to be worth money for the next house. I mean, for generations, if you're generations. leasing it, and yeah. you have a casino that's on there, that place is literally, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming if it's a lease, they're going to want probably like a, a 50 year lease at minimum. I can't imagine they would want anything cheaper than that. And if you have a 50 year lease on a place, that means you're making money for the rest of your life and your kids are making money for at least half of theirs and probably moving on into the next generation when they re up that lease. So and and they're trying to get rid of the property for 6 million. Yeah, six, that just doesn't 6 million split three ways, bro. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You know, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, which brings us to our number 4 WTF moment. What you're talking about? The brother from another mother strikes again. Ain't this some shit? Now, why hold that horse? No way. He got, he got the nerve to look a six million dollar gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> so, I had been, I had started bashing, oh boy, Andre last week because mm -hmm. he said he said he takes pictures of real estate, and I was like, bro, you taking pictures of real estate at night? Well, they brought his story to fruition in this episode. He is not just in real estate. He is a real estate attorney. Yeah, it seems and like he, he's going after P-Valley. He wants P-Valley's property. He wants that property and because the casino is supposed to be built on that property. And he's doing his homework. He's trying to make the deal happen. But there's still something a little eerie and mysterious about this brother because at the end of his storyline in this episode, he was on the phone with, I'm assuming, his girlfriend or his wife. Mm-hmm. Kicks her to the curb to get him in a good hand session with Autumn Knight. Larry, thoughts and opinions of a brother that they tried to seem like he had integrity, he had morals, and he did have them on certain things. But when it came to that peewee, he ain't have no integrity and morals. Tell me about this boy, Andre. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, that's, that's a tough one. I think he has some... He has some integrity when it comes to business, I think. And, and um, you know, part of that is, I think, when it comes with business is that if he, he can't just he can't just be super shady with it because he is a lawyer. So he has more to lose than just some money. If he ends up doing some shadiness, he can lose that money. But then he can also end up getting disbarred. And then your whole, you know, your whole career is down to all that education, all that time and energy you spent you know, studying, taking the bar, all that's just gone, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I understand why he's, why he's being above board on the business side, you know, but I think where, uh, I think he was already interested in autumn, autumn night when he saw her to begin with, he was like, okay, here's this attractive woman, yada, yada. And, and then I think she sort of piqued his interest when he was about to leave the club and she started talking to him about, doing uh you know double blind in corporations out of delaware i think he started to say oh maybe there's something a little bit more to her than than just a a, a booty shaker you know and so but that should he, also make called, you think that should also make you think okay you know all this business stuff how did you get to be booty shaking right 
Yeah, there's definitely. I mean, we know there's more story to her than 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 we know. They keep on they keep piecemealing it out to us a little by little, like the, you know, like the whole episode at the car wash when, when she freaked out being inside the oh, car. Don't worry. So, that's a that's a that's what that's in the list too. <laughs> okay, so, so you know, I mean, I. I mean, we're gonna we're definitely gonna see more. It looks like from the trailer they were showing us, it looks like that that uh, Autumn Knight ends up either sleeping with him or something, and films it, sort of like setting him up, you know. So it looks like they're definitely like they're definitely trying to uh, they're definitely trying to set him up to get to get played, even though he's not a complete good guy. He's still not a complete or not a complete bad guy. He's not a complete good guy, and. and Somehow, I think that he might end up, and this sounds crazy, but I think he might actually end up being a Captain Savaho. You know, possibly. I think, he, I possibly. think he might actually turn out to be like. Is I think that Autumn Knight might do all that stuff, and then I think she might come clean and be like, "Look, I didn't want to do this. I was being pushed into this, and this is what's going on." Mm-hmm. And I think he might actually become a Captain Savaho and try and uh, and try and get her out of whatever bad situation she's in at that moment. So. Right. And the only thing I got to say about his storyline was did y'all have to actually show the nut on his belly? We oh, I didn't see that. I'm glad I did not. We 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 didn't need to see the nut all over his belly. I mean, <laughs> bro, come on, man. Spare us a little bit. Number oh, three, gosh. WTF moment. This one's kind of funny and sad all at the same time. <laughs> It wasn't funny, Larry, but I can't lie, man. I laughed when she was trying to get up out of that Escalade, got the <laughs> mayor's Escalade all wetted up. Yeah. <laughs> and, she, I mean, that young lady needs some professional help. She I really mean, does. She's having these PT, PTSD-style issues, and obviously she's been through something that's very chaotic, very traumatic, and I feel for her. But the yeah, other thing about straight drunk. Yeah, man. The other thing about that clip is the dynamic that Uncle Clifford has with all these other people that are putting pressure on him from his business. That was the mayor of the city. I, First of I all, think, I think I think he and Uncle Clifford used to used to mess around together. I think there's I I felt like there was a dynamic there, like there was some tension that was not just like business tension. There was some other personal stuff there. I think those two, I think those two used to mess around. Because there was there was some personal stuff there. Oh yeah, it's definitely personal. If not, maybe Clifford has been a part of helping um, the mayor do something underhanded, like Kwame kill Patrick. And it could have been one of those. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. You, you have to go. You have to go and get real with it, man. <laughs> hey man, I mean, you want me? To, I'm keeping it real with you. That's the truth. And, and did you see how the mayor was so eager to take a picture with Uncle Clifford? How many mayors, first of all, do you ever catch them dressed like that? Like they damn yeah. Sean John. And then how many of them is going to take their car to get washed at Club Pink? And yeah, Pussy Valley? strip club. And then want to take a picture with the with this, I don't know what you want to call it. I don't think he's transgendered. I guess he's, I don't know, cross-dressing, gay strip club owner. I just don't see that most most politicians reaching out to, to have that picture out there. I, I, I agree. It depends. It depends on the politician. Most of the time it will be a lady politician doing that. Um, but needless to say, those two dynamics I found to be very intriguing and mm. it leads me to want to know, are they going to go into the backstory of uncle Cliff and the mayor? And when are we going to get more about what's going on with last week was my girl autumn night. This week, her ass is too crazy for me. <laughs> now, moving right along to the, the number two WTF moment that stars my new car, Mercedes, of which can y'all get a stripper named La Tesla? That's all <laughs> La I want to know. That's all I want to know. But here we go. Hey, rule 24.5. No crying at the pink. <laughs> I look at the old G knowing all the penile code and shit. She right though. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was some things to unpack in that clip. First of all, <laughs> why y'all got the cook? 
<laughs> who's giving he, his recipe is giving everybody gas, man. Who wants to be in a strip club and every time the stripper bend over, she pop and win all in your face, man? He should have been fired in the first place. That's number he one. He said that that some that some some customer said that the stripper farted on him. I was like, oh man, man. oh my lord! I'm, like, I'm not paying you for that dance. You gotta get up out of here with that. Yeah, man. You know? And I was like, people. wow. But but for me, the star of the show and the, and it's becoming the star of the series. Is that Mercedes? Now, in no, the beginning, she's meant, be. she's meant to be. She's like she's she's one of the main characters. In the beginning, I wasn't feeling her because I felt like she was getting an autumn night too much of a hard time. But mm. the more they're unpacking the character, you see that she has a very hardcore exterior. But once you get inside, she's a loving, giving person, and she's a damn boss. And I like boss women. And in this episode, she ran up on her mama and was like, you're going to give me that money back. And we understand yeah. why. She's trying to open up her own dance studio. And right her before that- going to be able to get that money back, though, because that mm -hmm. mom, her mom's gave it to the church. I, that, that money's not going to be able to be. Her mom's not going to yeah. have access to that. From what we saw, it looks like the mom's been taking that money and giving it to the dude that I guess he's the pastor. She's been giving it to him, so I mean, for all we don't even know if that money ever made it to the, uh, made it to the uh, the bank accounts, the church bank accounts. So I personally she's not getting think, that money back. I personally think she's going to get the money back, and instead of putting it on her dance studio, she's going to give it to Uncle Clifford to save his right. to save his strip club. But having yeah. said that, right before that clip, she took Autumn Knight to her crib. And was trying to console the chick. Right. And the chick slammed the door in her face and all this kind of stuff. And that made me look at Mercedes completely different. I was like, not only is you a boss chick, but you have a heart. But your heart gristled on the outside because of the condition of your job environment. So I respect that. And that's my girl now. I wasn't sure, though. I, when I just, she took her there, I wasn't sure if she was being genuine in that moment, I'm not sure if she was there really trying to console her or if she was there to, to gather Intel. It, I just, it wasn't clear to me. And I'm not, I'm still not clear on that. Cause the way that she went back and talked about her and talked about how raggedy her place was, I'm still not sure that she was there to console her. It could have been both. Been, it could have been both. Could have been yeah. both. I'll tell you what, though. One thing that was so Southern in that moment was, oh, you're not going to invite me in and offer me any red drink? <laughs> and then go talking about how the girl got newspaper up on her window. I was like, you know, damn. Now, I was like, that is so country. You're not going to offer me any red drink. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I mean, no. I mean, you know, they offer sweet tea in the South, too. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Yeah. I want to know if Bill. I want to know what Bill he has. Uncle Clifford has that he has fifty five thousand dollars in debt. Cause that, that's. I think they said he put a um he put a different mortgage out on the club. Okay, that would explain it. But now dang, before before we move on, closed on it. Yeah, man. Before we move on, can we talk about little murder as opposed to big murder? Cooking some damn fried chicken wings and lacing it with weed. Had everybody Man. all up in the joint, faded. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Chris P said red drink as in Red Bull. No, red drink is not Red Bull. Red drink is Kool-Aid. <laughs> Kool-Aid, man. Sometimes, sometimes people don't always have money for, for Kool-Aid because Kool-Aid is a name brand, so people would get flavor aid. Yeah, which man. Is, you know, <laughs> red drink is basically just Kool-Aid. Oh my goodness, man. Yeah. And <laughs> which brings us to the number one WTF moment. Larry already talked about it a little bit. Let's take a look. Andre Watkins, Esquire. I don't need to talk to him. No, but I got somebody else to see me like talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Two more reveals. Number one, Autumn Knight is falsifying somebody's identity in that mm -hmm. same episode you've seen her at somebody's financial records using that person's name and number two uncle clifford nosy ass wants to know about the casino so i'm sure he can take advantage of it 
And now he's got Autumn Knight as his little bitch to work over Andre, who already done got a nut in the same episode, and the girl won't even in the room with him. Damn. Your <laughs> turn, Larry. Damn. Oh, man. I mean... I mean, we can already see this episode's going. I mean, this storyline between those two are going real, real sideways. I, I just, uh, you know, I hope that I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like you know, if you go, I mean, obviously she can't just go. You know, Clifford, Uncle Clifford can't just go straight to Andre and be like, "Yo, what's the deal?" But considering that the dude is like fifty five thousand dollars in debt and he's about to lose the place outright it might be the perfect time to go to him and be like, yo, make me an offer and, and get from out from underneath all that debt. Cause otherwise he'll just end up losing the place. He'll be in a whole boatload of debt. Cause he's still going to owe the bank all that money and the bank will just foreclose on his place. And they're going to, and if they have a, uh, if they have a casino that's willing to buy it, you know, and, and, and honestly from the, Perspective of Andre and the and the and the casino uh, consortium, whoever they are, that are building that casino. I would much rather deal with Uncle Clifford than deal with the banks, because mm. if the banks take that money, take that over, they're going to know how much that place is worth. They're going to know the true value, and they're not just going to turn around and say, "Oh, we'll give it to you for you know for for paying off this debt in a few grand more." Uncle Clifford might be like, "Look." Pay off all my debts. Set me up as you know. Set me up on you know as, with a club on your guys' casino. You know at your casino, or set me up you know with a little spot around the block somewhere. And they might be you know they might have gone for that. But if that place gets gets foreclosed and it goes to wherever, goes to Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or something, they're going to be like, yeah, this casino is going to be worth how many hundreds of millions every year? Nah, you're going to have to really come up out of pocket for this place. We're going to want what? some real money. And and no. that's if we decide to sell it, we might just go ahead and, and make the lease on it. So. I'll do you one better, Larry. While Uncle Clifford was trying to use Autumn Knight to get information from Dre, he didn't use the powers of his mind to think about you already cool with the person Dre was doing business with, who right. really's got the money. And right. I'm sure maybe some point in time through the season, he might link back up with Corbin and be like, you know, I can help you out because they're trying to put the pressure on you to sign that lease. I can help you out by letting you take ownership of this club. And mm -hmm. then they'll have to go through the club in order to get the lease done, get this extra job done, whatever, whatever. So right. at some point in time, I can see a link up between Uncle Cliff and Corbin via him learning dirty information from Autumn Knight who's going to suck the main drain right out of Dre, who is obviously extremely thirsty for a tall drink of Autumn Night. <laughs> he does seem to like her. I, You know, I just, I think, well, we'll see what happens with it. We'll see what happens. You and, know. And, I, and, and I was so disappointed in him when Mercedes came in there and said, how you like your drink, chocolate or light? And he said, light. And well, no, right he said, she said, do you, which one do you want tonight? And he said, I think I'll take the, the, the white one tonight. Yeah, I don't whatever. think he has a preference either way, but I whatever. think he, was just, I think he didn't one. like her. He took the I, white one. He took the, I don't I, think I, he liked, I, I, I don't, I don't think he I don't liked care. her because I think she came in there like she, she came in there with, you know, with a sense of arrogance. Like, you know, of mm. course, like push her to the side. Of course, you're going to want me. And I think he was like, yeah, you're cool. I, you know, I, I could, I could, I could feel you a little bit, but and then you see him look to the side, right past Mercedes, <laughs> like, yeah, you're cool, but, and, you know, so we'll see. We'll well, see. But he, he already had it in for Autumn Night anyway. From the time Autumn Night to her, it's Haley to him. Haley, he already had it in for Haley yeah. from the time that they seen each other outside the club. It's just. It's one of these things where I'm with you. She, he might can become the saber hole for this show, but how is he going to act when he finds out that she was put on a mission to get information out of? Right. 